Bill Show is on the road today, coming to you from Tyler, Texas. Where check this out, this house behind me under construction. Believe it or not, this is going to be for sale for two hundred thousand dollars. And I'll tell you what, this has some better details than most two million dollar houses in Texas. We're going to be visiting a really smart builder in Tyler, talking about some build show details that he has learned and has absolutely implemented on these fairly moderately priced houses. Today's build show all about Josh McAlpine and some really cool houses. Well, let's get going. All right, guys, Josh McAlpine. Josh, what are we looking at here? This is the development two, phase two of a 11 house development. Okay. Over on this side, we built seven already and they're almost all sold, just two more left. But this one we just constructed and this is the most energy efficient homes in Smith County, legitimately. <laughs> and am I right that this is gonna be on the market pretty soon for like $200,000? Actually, it's a little bit less. So numbers are gonna fall about 190, 195, somewhere Holy around cow, there. that's crazy. That's and not bad at all. It's the Very only important. four, the all four of them are ZERH certified homes. Zero the, energy ready homes, homes through Energy Stars. Uh, that's program. correct. And it's only four certified in Smith County. Holy cow, how about that? Now, from the street, I gotta say, Josh, looks like normal construction. Doesn't look like anything special. Are there some secrets that we need to see here? There's a lot of <laughs> Matt Reisinger secrets through the entire thing. I love it, let's go check it out. He's got a mock-up for us in the back of the house, so let's walk back there. All right, Josh, so from the street, it looks like you got carport out front, uh, full zip system sheathing, always like that. Makes for a great air and water barrier. Some relatively normal looking uh, Jeldwin vinyl windows, it looks like. Closed soffit details, nothing super uh, special here quite yet. I am noticing though, it looks like you've got some Fentrum tape. The whole house is completely Fentrum. Okay, so there's some high performance, there's a high performance detail you don't see every day, let alone on a affordably priced house. Uh, <laughs> okay, so back porch, I'm already seeing something that's different, Josh. Look at this, y'all. I'm seeing that this porch ceiling framing is ledgered on rather than going through the building. And I'm guessing that the roof framing is also ledgered on. Is it, that true, Josh? That's, that's correct. So it actually goes all the way up to it, just like the same houses that you build, the other big houses. Everything's going directly to the top and it's full Monopoly style framing. Oh, Modified baby, style. Monopoly framing. And here you can see it on the back. Oh, Josh, this warms my heart, my friend. Look how nice this looks. And you actually have this in stages for me so we can see it, right? That's correct. Yes, sir. Yeah, the, we finished the first three houses already completely framed. So okay. he, he, he wanted to get it completed, but I was like, hey, Matt's coming. We got to leave him something so we can see on the little modification of the framing that I kind of just came up with, honestly. Just I watched a couple of videos, some this is people. Awesome. And I was like, man, there's gotta be a good way, affordable way to do it. And this is kind of what I came up with. This is fantastic. So no overhang here. And I'm seeing that two by four ledger on. Is that the start of your soffit right there? That, that is I'm the seeing? start of your soffit. That's the band. That's exactly it. Okay. It's completely banded here. So that will then out. will form the basis for his soffit right there. And Monopoly framing, you know, you, you guys have probably heard it if you've seen the build show before. We're talking about where the wall transitions right to the roof and that's a tape joint. So we can get a nice airtight seal there and watertight, of course. But then every bit of framing that makes overhang is after the fact, right? That's correct. Every part of it is actually after it. And you can see on this line right here where we've already done it, uh -huh. that whole line, it's not uh, it's already been airtight sealed on it. That's just covering up the porch part of it, of the overhang. Got it. Where it's coming out over. So in order, there's this tape line right there that I'm sort of pointing to is the start of his Monopoly framing. And so I'm guessing like this little section you've left off here that you're adding another piece of zip on the porch or on the overhang rather. And that's then forming that overhang right that's correct that's exactly what it's doing so up through here we're just going to extend it i just want to leave it open to where you could kind of see the um engineering behind it i yep. guess you call yep. it not really yeah, engineering yeah. just your standard blocking your on framing it. all the way through it coming up on the top of it as well you can see where it's already been sealed it's so beautiful. the extra piece that's going to come up over just like that one 
will get taped, again, just for the water barrier side of it. Dang, that's fantastic, Josh. I love it. Just through it. So the 2x4 is your sub fascia. Then he's got a fascia board that comes on. He's got a soffit. So when it's all put together, this will look like any other house with a, I don't know, was that an 18-inch overhang maybe, something like that? Uh, 16. 16-inch 16 yes, overhang. Yeah, 18 total with the 2x4, but it's 16 inches soffit through there. But look at that view right there. I mean, that just tells the story, guys. Beautiful work. Monopoly framing, all this is added on outside of the fact, outside of the envelope, perfectly air sealed. And uh, as we walk inside, Josh, tell me the, tell me how you're able to do these houses at such a affordable price. What's the, what's the genesis here? So basically what, what we wanted to do is make it the most energy efficient home here. Mm -hmm. And this is actually a grant funded through HUD and it's for the city of Tyler. Okay. Um, it's for low to moderate income. So the so city of Tyler is actually your client. The here. city of Tyler, Tyler is actually the people that we are building for. Um, they're, they contracted me to come in and do all 11 of these houses. Holy cow, that's awesome. And as we walk inside, this looks like pretty traditional framing, nothing special here. Uh, wait a minute. There is some specialness going on here. These are two by four walls, but am I seeing staggered stud? That is staggered stud. Check that out. That's awesome. So two by six bottom plate. Two and by then, six bottom and top. And then your studs are on 24 inch on center staggered, I'm guessing. 24 inch center staggered. That's exactly okay. it. So, so we got two foot over here, two foot on that side. Um, Fantastic. The, now, I am noticing, though, that it looks like there's an occasional extra stud in here that looks like a two by six in the wall. What's going on with that, Josh? So the first house that we framed, the inspector came out and uh, came out to inspect it for the framing side of it. And he called me and was like, hey, the, there has to be a single stud in here for a fire block. Mm -hmm. Every 10 feet that's required by code for a fire block even on foam insulations, so that way there's no fire. He said because it just it. creates a, a cavity for flame to go through, basically. Yeah, and if I'm sure people watching this know, but staggered stud construction allows you to have a nice uh, thermal break because this is approximately two inches in here between the face of the stud and the back of the zip, and that insulation that he's going to use. What are you going to use for insulation here? By foam the way? insulation. Okay, It'll so be open, open, cell. open cell. We'll be able to go in here and kind of zigzag around these studs. You also notice he's got nice California corners. So he's got nice full depth insulation on that corner as well with maybe one thermal bridge here for fire blocking reasons. That's correct. Uh, with that two by six in the corner. But other than that, looking really good. Am I also noticing that you've got an insulated header pocket too? That's exactly it. I'm watching Steve and I love his shows. <laughs> Steve every, Basic's awesome, isn't Steve he? Steve Basic, <laughs> everything that he puts out, I always try to uh, take note of it. And I saw this, uh, it was a while back when he did it, but the LVL, so it's a nine and a half inch on these front windows, which are about five and a half foot wide. So we went with a nine and a half inch LVL for that very reason, to where I could have a pocket for there's no thermal bridging even in my headers. Yep. So it's a LVL on it. And believe it or not, running a nine and a half inch LVL was only like a dollar, less than a dollar a foot. Holy cow. More. That, That's that crazy. was literally it. As, as compared to doing a double two by 12 um, header on it. Yeah, double two by 12 with some plywood in the center. That's let's exactly say. it. Where by the time you, you swap that out to an LVL, it's really not bad. It is not more expensive. That's fantastic. And, and then, then as Steve always says, you know, bringing the continuity in, yep. bringing it all through here. The uh, um, Yeah, so you've run the zip R into the, uh, uh, into the jams as well. That's correct. And then it looks like you've put some big stretch or some other caulking. That's it. That's exactly right. So we've well. backer rod all the way behind it and then put some uh, caulking in front of it for the seal tightness of it. Oh, that's fantastic. Way to go. And I saw there's a uh, zip system stretch tape stretch as tape well. Stretch tape on the bottom. On the sills. So on the sills, on the inside, it is completely zip taped the that's entire awesome. house. And then talk to me about your attic. It looks to me like uh, you're probably getting yourself set up for a conditioned attic, is that right? That is correct. So everything will be um, in the conditioned space. And uh, I had guys over at Rose City AC are just phenomenal. We went with uh, an upgraded system. So it was something that I had to have them kind of engineer and it was 
somewhat new for them. They they done it on the commercial side, but okay. no builders here in East Texas really want to spend the money. <laughs> let's know? let's go see if we can find Will from uh, Rose City and Absolutely. ask him a couple questions. Will, I got to tell you, Josh gave you a pretty nice envelope to start with. I'm guessing not every builder you work for here in town gives you such a well insulated and tight envelope to work with. Uh, no, uh, most of them don't. And Josh <laughs> did really take care of this one pretty well. Yeah, he definitely did. So I'm guessing you guys probably started with a manual J on this job before you got started on really doing design. Talk to me about the manual J. What would you find out on this house? Uh, found out it was going to be a pretty good envelope. Uh, when we're designing the Energy Star houses, the, we start at the manual J with the energy audit. Uh, this one was going to be a pretty fun project. Uh, the low square footage with the amount of equipment that we're putting in here, it, it, was, it was pretty fun. So what would you find out? This is 1,300 square feet. I wonder what your tonnage is on this thing. Uh, it calls for, and I don't have it with me, but 1.2 tons, 1.3 tons, okay. uh, 1,300 square foot. Uh, so 1,000 square feet to the ton, basically, Yeah. which yeah. is a fantastic. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it makes it that's nice. It's a very high efficient envelope. Yeah, and we like those. We want to see more of those. For sure. Uh, so talk to me about the equipment you're using. Then. What are you putting in here? Uh, we're putting in some RUD uh, 18 SEER, SEER 2, uh, communicating, full modulating equipment. Wow, fantastic. All heat pumps, I'm assuming. Yes, sir. Okay. And then any other equipment besides uh, heat pump? You putting dehumes in here at all? Or yes, what are you guys sir. doing for we've fresh air? A, we've got a 70 pint uh, Santa Fe dehumidifier, uh, a Brone AI, uh, ERV, and uh, we also have makeup air for the mun municipality codes. Fantastic. Now, I don't normally think of affordable housing as getting a Brone ERV. Is this kind of standard for you guys? Is uh, this? I don't think it's standard for anybody. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, this this is kind of a, a flagship for us too. We're we're trying to hopefully make this a more common thing. That's awesome, man! Super impressive. Now, how are those devices, or are they not communicating to each other? Like, and for instance, how'd you run that Santa Fe? The Santa Fe is hooked into the the Rudd communicating system as basically a backup because the Rudd communicating system will take care of dehumidification by itself. Okay. And so if it's in dehumidification and the system is having trouble keeping up with you know Texas humidity, uh, the Santa Fe comes in as a as a as a back source. Oh, interesting. Okay. And how did you run that? Separate ductwork or are you utilizing the house's uh, ductwork? Uh, both. It it has its own separate return centralized, and then we uh, supply into the existing supply ductwork through the plenum. Uh, with backflow dampers and things like that. My friend Sean Harris, who's a big uh, HVAC nerd like me, says he likes putting the dehum into the plenum because then it's going to dry out all that ductwork if there was any incidental moisture in there and just make sure it's nice and dry. But I would tell you too, like this, all this ductwork, which is running through your air conditioned space, you know, it's not going to have sweating up there. It's not going to have issues. It's going to be in real nice shape. Interesting, you had a lot of vaults in here to work with, though. So you had kind of a limited amount of attic space with these vaults, didn't you? Yeah, it was very limited, uh, and it was fun designing it out, uh, which I know this stuff isn't supposed to be fun, but it, it really was. Uh, <laughs> combination of hard pipe and, and flex ducting and, you know, just really, uh, you know, kind of coming up with it on the fly on some yeah, things. Yeah. Now, i got to ask you a question, Well, I get in a lot of expensive houses. I've done very expensive uh, fresh air systems in some of my houses. This is a pretty affordable house at 200 k Did you get pushback from Josh about, you know, putting an ERV in, putting a dehumidifier in, some of that kind of stuff? I wouldn't say pushback. Uh, you know, we, we worked, me and Josh worked on this from, from square one. It wasn't a typical bid situation. Yeah. Uh, we both attacked this as soon as he came to me with the project. Uh, and we worked with the city, you know, the municipality that's paying for it. Yep. And once we came to a decision of what we wanted to do, uh, the economy of it was kind of second nature at that point. Yeah. Because uh, we wanted it to happen, it needed to happen, and, and we made it happen with the budget that was allowed. That's awesome. Impressive work, Will. Very impressive, man. If you guys are watching this you're near, anywhere near Tyler, I would definitely give these guys at Rose City a call. I mean, everything here is clean well done i love that they did a true manual j really looked at the envelope the windows impressive will nice job brother yes sir thank, thank you. you josh this is an incredible build for 200k man are you making money on these i'm trying that is for sure <laughs> but it's not it really wasn't a thing for me and my wife of making the money because i've got oil and gas interests i got other things that i do yeah so it was more of an opportunity for us to 
somewhat give back in, in, in a way awesome. and, and not charge what a normal builder would charge. Yeah. And it's, it was more of a kind of a heart thing for us that yeah. we really wanted to be part of this project. But I want to, I want to just say, man, I mean, these are $200,000 houses that even if you built them for no profit, these details are still far better than I see on $2 million houses in Texas, which is, I think how I started the video. I mean, all of this envelope detail, really good HVAC system. This is not standard for us in Texas. No, it is not. But I've had a great mentor. His name is Matt. Um, I think I have watched every single video. Awesome, I'm man. that dude. I, I love it. truly watched every one of them. And I've learned every technique truly from the build show uh, with Matt. I mean, not with Matt, but with uh, um, like Steve, Steve and those guys. everybody, yeah. like all the stuff that they're doing. So That's I'm like, I, I can implement this. And, and it's really, it was a thing to me. When I reached out was, was I build smaller houses. Mm -hmm. Not everybody, I don't build million dollar houses, two right. million dollar houses, but I'm like, you know what? If, if another builder, if this is what it was a teaching thing for me is, is to let other builders know yeah. that you can do this on a budget. Yeah. I mean, I've proved it. Yeah. Not that it has anything to do with me, but my subs, everybody, mm -hmm. it was some learning curves. You know, it was the old saying is like, oh, well, we don't do it like that. Why, why do we, we don't do it? We don't build like that anymore. <laughs> You know, but it's new. Everything's changing. You don't have yeah. your same bag phone you had in the 80s. Right. We yeah. all got iPhones. Everything's changed. Why not the building side of it? So that brings a question for me. Like when I see these monopoly framing details, I'm working with a framer that I've worked with for, you know, 15 years, Bill Wood and his crew. I mean, they do all my work. It was really easy for me to, uh, you know, show them how to do it. I didn't have to talk them into it. I suspect you've got some trades that haven't worked with you before. What did they say or how did you train them when you started to tell them some of these framing details in particular? So Octavio, uh, Sarah is, is my framer, um, okay. Alexandria, um, Alexandra's uh, construction is who he is. And he loved it. Like he, he awesome. was the one guy who was like, dude, let's go. Like, show me what I need to do, teach me and I will do it on everyone. And he took yeah. pride in it. So it was, uh, it was, I cannot praise him enough on awesome. the details that he put into it with his guys. He was on top of them. Like he knows exactly what I wanted. This was the last house out of the, the second phase. Okay. So the first one was kind of that learning curve. Yeah. Second one, he was learning it more third and fourth. I'm telling you, he's like, man, I'm going to tell my builders that he wants to start building this way. And he wants to start framing this way. So it was, it was great. All right, so then let's talk with the proofs in the pudding. What kind of numbers were you getting on this house? Have you done any blower door tests? What kind of performance are you seeing? So I did actually. So the first two houses, pre-installation, both of them blew a 3.7, okay. which in Tyler code is three. Yep. So after insulation, I blew a 1.1. .1. So spray foam insulation, then 1.1. .1. Spray foam insulation, 1.1. .1, and then two days later, arrow barrier came out. Ooh. And arrow with arrow barrier, the end result was a zero point three four. It's both houses blue. And I'd like to point out that these are not like passive house level whatever. I mean, these are like some basic Geldwin, uh, you know, vinyl windows, right? It's correct. Upgraded. I, I went with uh, I think it was Energy Star Code seven point three. Okay. Um, but it was I wanted to get it proof for the following year. So the numbers look pretty good. I mean, when I looked at that U factor on that window, it's like 0.26. That's right. So it's almost an R4 window. Most windows in me code are like R3. Mm -hmm. So that's a 30% jump in performance, even though those numbers don't look like a passive house number. That does make a big difference, doesn't it? A huge difference. So for this whole house, upgrading it to from just basic to what it needed to be for ZRH certified house, mm -hmm. upgrading it to this was literally less than $400 on the Gosh. whole house package. Holy cow, that's crazy. Crazy. So it's minimal money. And that's something that I want builders to know is yeah. doing the techniques, doing these things, it's minimal. Yeah. The most expensive part that I had in this was the HVAC system. Yeah, I mean, you put a better system in, but what I'd like to point out is that, you know, you didn't put a top of the line Zender, you know, like the Lamborghini. No. You put the Toyota Camry of systems in, which is that Brown AI. I suspect that's maybe a $3,000-ish dollar system. And you know, that's 1%, 2%, 1.5%, 1 let's say of the price of the house. But that's really important when you build a tight house to bring fresh air, to do it continuously. 
just as important for an affordable house as it is a luxury house. And yet so many luxury builders aren't doing anything for fresh air or they're doing some crappy system where you only bring it into the return side and yet you're doing a true ERV. Yeah, so this system, honestly, the only upgrade that I had in it was doing the ERV, doing the, um, the, the dehumidifier. Yep, yep. And Pretty the full dehumidifier. system, the whole house dehumidifier, whole house ERV system, it cost me an extra as, reg as instead of going with just a regular HVAC, HVAC system mm -hmm. was about 6,000 more. 6,000 bucks, not bad at all. For, for, and that was, as you always say, it's the lungs of the home. When yeah. We're building high yeah. performance, building homes this tight, we have to upgrade our system. So if you're building a million dollar house, maybe that's less than 1% of your construction costs. It might've been two or 3% on a house of this size and scale but that's money well spent. It's going to be with the house for the life of the house. The best money, especially on the system, on the yeah. efficiency side of it. That's pretty awesome. Anything we missed detail wise that's covered up that we can't see today that you wanted to mention that you've learned from the build show? So one, the rain screen, you yes. know, the first seven houses that I built over here, um, those were all, I did rain screen on those as well. And I went with the one by four Okay. all around the windows, yeah. the walls, everything did the, uh, uh, bug screen underneath it, did Killer. everything with it. And it added about 400 bucks per house. Okay. So I was looking at this one and, and, and I knew this extra stuff I wanted to do. So I'm thinking, how can I save? So I actually found a product. We did it at one of my buddy's house. We did a stucco house for him mm -hmm. and I had some of this left over. So I looked at it, I'm like, this is gonna work great. And this whole entire roll, it's a massive roll. I can't think the exact footage of it, but it was like literally 300 bucks. Oh my gosh. That $300 roll is going to finish this fourth house. And so did you cut it into strips like I'm seeing yeah, here? So it comes in a big roll. We just cut it to the length, which is about seven, four, I believe was the length of it. Mm -hmm. And four inches wide. We're putting it on every foot. That's fantastic. And this is just like a 3D mesh type product. Looks literally like it's maybe uh, for stucco. three eighths inch thick. You didn't necessarily need the um, filter fabric on there. That would have been to make sure the stucco doesn't fill That's up exactly the holes. It. That's exactly but it, you don't need to take it off either. No, right? yeah, not at all. It's fine. Man, impressive. Anything else on the outside you did that you want to mention? So awkward bibs on each house. Okay, um, sweet. Also, I did Eric's Titan. Um, oh, the outlet boots for your HVAC. Outlet boots for the HVAC, yes. which Will had never done before, and he saw them, and he absolutely loved them. He said, man... I will provide this now for every single home. That's killer. Are you going to do the line set cover as well, that PVC line set cover? Yes, sir. I did it in white. So on an affordable house to have a line set cover to make sure that the insulation doesn't degrade, right. now you've got a house that you've given to these homeowners that's going to last a couple of uh, generations. I mean, this is a really well-built, really tight, and crazy affordable house. I am super impressed, Josh. Anything else that you missed that you wanted to mention? No, I think that's pretty much everything okay so i got i got to gig you on one thing because it's something i've thought about too and i, I asked his permission before i i did this <laughs> i noticed you've got one double beam coming through your envelope here i do and i've made that same mistake before and i've got a house coming up that i was about to make that mistake on and i caught it um when you've got two beams penetrating through the zip it's really hard to air seal them and you pointed he pointed this out to me off camera by the way i'm not i'm not gigging <laughs> in here on camera uh so what uh, Josh told me is the next time he builds this plan, he's going to go with a single LVL there. And I said, another option too, could be do an exterior post in that location. But I like the single LVL that way, when that penetrates the zip sheathing, you could tape it, you could liquid flash it, you can air seal it. But when you have two coming through, it's almost impossible to air seal it. So that's one small amount of leakage. And of course, a little leakage isn't going to kill us. And he's got error barrier. But everywhere you can seal it down tight, which you really have on this house. I mean, I saw the Sega Fentrum tape on the outside. Uh, I've seen that you've gone in and pre-foamed before your insulation contractor Absolutely. comes, just tightening everything down. It looks to me like uh, you're on your penetrations, you've stuck with the Jake Bruton one hole for one thing method. Thing. It, that... So you've really sealed this house up tight. And don't forget, you've got less forgiveness on a 1,200 square foot house then you have it in a 3,000 square foot house. Literally, so we did the exact same thing. I built a house, helped my buddy build it for his parents. And he had never done like a kind of high performance type building. So I was more, more or less a consultant with yeah. him on it. Yeah. And um, that house was 3,300 square feet, excuse me, 3,200 square feet. Um, we didn't do a blow or test before, but afterwards we blew a 2.2. And then after Arrow Bear, we blew a 0 0.4. 
<laughs> and that was a 3200 all 10 foot plate line massive Dang. vaults everywhere so it was uh it, it proved my system yeah. excuse me your system no no it's uh, no it's all our systems ability. it's all our systems i just am a mouthpiece i'm just a normal builder like you man josh super super impressive man i'll put uh, if you guys need josh or you're interested in talking to him i'll put his email address in the description below but uh, you know, there's, there's literally thousands of you just like Josh out there that are watching these videos, learning from all the Build Show Network uh, contributors. There's no new information. None of this is stuff I've thought of. I've nailed it. I've grabbed it from other people as well. Josh is now teaching Tyler how to build this way as a community. And I suspect there's going to be other builders that are going to pick up these methods and Tyler, your framer is going to take that over and talk so. to a couple of his builders about what you're doing here. I bet people have visited that you don't realize and said, what, what the heck are they doing here? Because uh, this is different and it's better. And what's awesome about it is it didn't cost a crazy amount of money. It was a couple of percent more on the bottom line and it's worth it. So Josh, well done, my friend. Great Thank job. So Hopefully Appreciate I'll see you at Build Show Live in November in Austin, Absolutely, Texas. Absolutely, I'll be there. Uh, we might need to get you in a speaking role because you are really got a lot to learn. You've got a lot to teach and a lot of people have a lot to learn from you. So anyways, guys, big thanks for joining Josh and I for a uh, job site tour here. If you're not currently a subscriber, hit that subscribe button below. We've got new content every Tuesday and every Friday. Follow us on TikTok or Instagram. Otherwise, we'll see you next time. Do you know how I close this out? Have you ever seen any Absolutely. of my videos? Absolutely. Otherwise, we'll see you next time on The Build Show. Show.